Alpha Bollocks is the new standard in quality supplements, providing you the highest quality performance. Alpha Bollocks seeks to succeed in all aspects of life. Learn, grow, challenge yourself every day. Follow our social media for sales, training videos, lifestyle tips, and product drops. Alpha Bollocks is the new... What's up, people? New England MMA, The Room Podcast. I screwed everything up in the beginning. I couldn't find my live stream anywhere. Uh, I'm going to look for it for one second, but i just like to say thank you for tuning in. We are on our second show on YouTube. Uh, let me find something. Let me find the stream and just make sure I have sound uh, because the beginning of the show, I always get a little nervous that there won't be sound. And I haven't uh, turned everything on, so let me see. Yeah, we have time. We have sound. I'm so excited. We got about five people watching. I did share the feed to um, New England MMA and to um, and to uh, do 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 my personal page. And I did tag Billy, and I did tag tag John. Hey, I'll be ready in a couple of minutes. Just gonna get into my car. Yeah, Billy. Billy Goff is going to be our first guest, and uh, he just told me he's getting in his car right now. So uh, Billy Goff is coming off a win Thursday night, a big second-round TKO of uh, Robson Gracie. 3-0, and I do believe Robson was. So um, we're going to talk to Billy about that fight, second-round TKO, and uh, he just destroyed him. Nonstop pressure. We're just going to talk all about that fight because Billy did talk about finishing him. Billy thought he was going to submit him, but... Um, you know, a knockout's even better. So, with that said, Billy gets his second win for Bellator. He is now 3-2 and two, uh, as a pro welterweight, and he's never been finished in them two fights. Billy was caught in the first round from one of those fights, uh, couldn't make it to the second round, Dr. Stoppage. And uh, the other fight he lost was against Cameron Lachinoff, who had a fabulous fight, fight of the night, I do believe, on that same card. And uh, Billy went the distance, five rounds with uh, with Cameron. So Billy is on uh, he's on an upside right now. The kid's only 22 years old. He's already got five professional fights. He's already got two wins for Bellator. And uh, he's a very, 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 very good kid. Very, very, very good kid. So anything else I want to show you before uh, Billy comes on? You know what? I want to play an ad right now for my uh, my my buddy, um, Christos, who's... Um, do I have it up here? Just opened his own gym, and uh, I want to give him a little love. He's uh, it's a, it's a no, it's a, it's a no gi, all no gi gym, the only one in New Hampshire, I do believe. So I'm gonna play his video before uh, Billy comes on. So give me one second here. So I played it twice, uh, or one and a half. So Billy's ready. Uh, let me get off this. I don't know why I can't see anyone uh, talking or anything, but that's all right. That's why I kind of like Facebook Live. I could see the chatting. I haven't figured it all out on uh, 
uh, messenger yet. So let me give Billy a call right now. Hopefully this works. Oh, I think it's going to work. I think it's going to work. Billy Goff, you are live. Are you dri- are you driving in the snow, my man? I am not currently driving. <laughs> Give me one second. I gotta put you on. Uh, you are on live, but your uh, your face is not on. There is Billy Goff right there, my man. Billy, um, where you, where you off to in a blizzard or a, a northeaster or whatever we got going on? I'm leaving practice right now. Oh, all right. So you uh, you, you didn't even take time off. You're right back to practice after a big win on Thursday night. I, I went to practice uh, that Friday. No shit. No shit. Yeah. Um, I didn't have that many injuries. The only, the only thing that was really an issue was my right eye and my right foot. Okay, your right foot from uh, what? Kicking him, uh, kicking him pretty, uh, pretty yeah. good? There was uh, one time where, because I, I caught a lot of his kicks and kicked him while I was holding him. And one one of the first ones, I kicked him in the knee, and I think it just popped some blood vessels. Maybe done some, might have done a little bit of damage to the tendons on top. I have no idea. All right. Well, you'll, you know, a it big like Frodo's foot. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Do you have a sneak around? What are you wearing right now? Say that again. What are you wearing right now? Like, uh, is your foot a balloon? One more time. Is your is your foot a balloon? Is it uh is it all right? Is it the same? Like it's not all big and swollen, is it? I uh Billy Billy Billy, uh I think you I think you're covering the mic. Nope. Oh, there, there, you there you are. You you were covering the mic or something. All right, so you're on your way home from practice. Um, how long does it take you to get home? Right now, since it's snowy, it's going to take me a little longer because I'm driving slow. But normally, it's like I live like 10, 15 minutes from my gym. Oh, that's not bad at all. That's uh, about how that's about how far I live from uh, the studio. So I'll be I'll be driving in it later, man. Um, so how how many how many inches they expecting in Connecticut? I heard I heard a foot. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. So, um, are you uh, planning on going to shovel, uh, shovel, shovel Dexter out tomorrow to get some more training in? I, uh, if I have to, I absolutely would. <laughs> is that is that part of uh, is that part of being in the gym? You gotta you gotta shovel and stuff if you get a northeaster. Uh, there's usually a, they do a, there's plows that come through for our gym, but I mean it'd be it'd be a good way to do add some cardio in. Exactly, man. Exactly. Well. Seeing you on Thursday, brother, you don't need any cardio, man. Let's talk about that fight, buddy. Uh, nonstop pressure on uh, Robson, man, and that was the that was the game plan. Go in there, overwhelm him, and not let him breathe, brother. How you feel about uh, the fight and how you did in there? Uh, I'm super happy about it. I've been, it's been a great weekend. I've been happy all weekend. Uh, it's, uh, I'm really proud. I love I like the, high, the, the TKO finish. Um, I just love seeing the elbows. Um, and I'm just really happy with a lot of the things I did. There's a couple things I wasn't too happy about, but just small things you work on. It's always good to have something to work on. Um, my biggest thing that I was happy about was if, if you saw my last amateur fight against Sanad, um, the reason I got caught in a triangle was because I was on the ground. I just gotten out of his darts and I wanted to punch him in the face and I did. But then my coach yelled, get up. And I thought about it, but I just really, I was really, I was too caught up in trying to punch him in the face. So I stayed there and I was just throwing big shots. And as, I mean, when you're pulling your arms back, you open yourself up for a triangle. And he slipped it in and put me out. And I just wanted to make sure this fight, because there was going to be sometimes where we went to the ground, I wanted to make sure I wasn't too tunnel, uh, tunnel vision. And I could focus and set, like address each situation as it came. And I was every time we went down. It, um, there's a couple times where I tried to, where I scrambled with him a little bit. Um, and as soon as we got out and we were in a position where it's like, all right, I don't want to fight from here. I don't have enough of an advantage. Um, it's, he has too much to work with. I just stood up, and I was really happy with myself for doing that. 
it, yes, it showed uh, it showed great um you know great great patience on your end because you were hurting him on the feet, you were winning it, and you were putting pressure on him, and it looked like you know right off the bat, dude, you were you were taking his get you were emptying his gas tank. Did you feel your pace um kind of sucking the air out of him because uh. There was, there was once or twice when he uh, he hit the ground and he, he wanted to pull God and have you come down. It took him a while to get up. It looked like he was already kind of gassed halfway through that first round. Yeah, I think um, I so in the second round, he was definitely tired. Just he couldn't keep himself up. He was exhausted. I think in the first one, um, he might have had an adrenaline dump. Um, I think he started getting tired near the end of the first, but at first I don't think he was too tired. I think he just what he got shocked by the pressure I was putting on him, and every time he tried to grab me, I pushed into him, and every time he tried to do something, I just kept pushing at him, and he he's used to guys running away from him because everybody tries to get away from his grappling, and I knew that I was coming, so I made sure I pushed in because he wasn't going to be ready for it. And I don't think he was. And I think that just kind of threw him off. And he just wasn't, he wasn't having the fight that he wanted. Uh, yes, it definitely looked like you definitely confused him in there. You had him backpedaling the whole fight. Uh, he really couldn't get anything off. He couldn't get any offense, offense going. And, and when you did take him down and, and, you know, he's thinking, hey, maybe he'll follow me down here. You never did until uh, you talked about having control and feeling very confident when you were on the ground because you did uh, you did spend a little time there for, uh, uh, on one occasion or so. Uh, did you feel like that you were like, you know, so much stronger and you could kind of, uh, you know, because uh, cause you did talk about submitting him, correct? Like you wanted yes, to I, submit him. I wanted to. That would have been ideal. So, so what'd you feel when you actually hit the ground for like a couple of seconds or so? Um, you know, he was fading anyway, but did you feel like, um, hey, maybe I could stay down here? Or did your coach like scream at you, get the hell back up? Uh, or what was going on? So my coach actually told me, so there was a couple times he, he was telling me to get up. Um, and he told me, to, one time he said, get up. The next time, stay down. Because we were getting close to the end of the round. We could have uh, ridden in a mouth. Um, and kept control and taking more gas from him. But the, um, the one time I stayed down there and was scrambling with him, I almost, I was trying to go for, uh, trying to go into mount, but we scrambled a little bit and then I came out into the front and he had butterfly guards. Um, and so then I stood up and then the next time we came down, I ended up in his guard, which I didn't ideally want to work from cause he has all of his submission options from there. Yeah. So I just hit him a couple times and then stood up. But I was hoping, I, like, I wanted to take him down and try to go into side control so I can work more from there. And I have, like, I'm not a submission guy. I don't, like, when I roll, I don't roll and chase submissions. I do them just to practice them, but I prefer to get position and stuff elbows in your face. Exactly. You like to put punishment there. And, uh, yeah. you know, when you when you get in positions like that, uh, you want to finish fights. Hey, you know, when you were in that position with him in the second round, when you were laying them elbows, and uh, I think it was um, I think it was a nice shot that led led off that 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 fury of fights of uh, of shots. Um, it looked like some of your 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 couple of your old days when you were getting them uh them uh dog fights right there in the pocket throwing fists. You were laying some some elbows and uh, punches on this guy. Uh, did you know you were gonna finish him right there when that was happening? Um, as soon as I, so I was, when I first was doing it, I was like, I double jabbed and I threw an elbow and he moved away from me and I didn't chase him cause I didn't want to, I don't want to, I didn't want to run into anything cause, and cause he hit me with a couple punches. Um, I didn't ever feel rocked, but one of them looks like they, it took me off balance a little. Um, so I don't ever try to bum rush him because then that's how you get knocked out. Um, so, but then when he put it, he stood, he was standing up straight up against the cage and he didn't really, wasn't throwing anything back at me. And I was able to hit him with a, um, a two and then an elbow. And then the, I heard the ref say, hops and show me something. And as soon as he said that, it's like, all right, this is over. Because he was rocked, and the ref's about to finish it, so that's when I started just, I didn't move. 
I just threw elbow after elbow. Yeah, and you know what? I mean, it was it was a great stoppage. I mean, you know, one or two elbows, they could have stopped it even earlier because you were putting some uh, some really damage. He wasn't coming back from it. You could just see him. He was ready to hit the canvas. Um, what was the feeling like, brother, when uh, when uh, that fight was stopped and, and, and you did basically what you said you were going to do? You were going to finish it, Gracie. I, um, I, like, part of me wanted me, I, I, part of me wanted to cry. I was just super happy and emotional and it was just a lot because it's been a year of training, of stress, like injuries, like just being uncomfortable, um, having fights, like having the fight canceled three times. Um, it's just, um, it's a lot. Like a camp takes a lot out of you and it takes a lot out of, um, you get a lot from your teammates and it's just a whole t team thing and it, it, there's a lot of emotion behind it. And so I just said, oh, I, I just wanted to cry because I was just so happy that it all paid off. Uh, dude, I busted your chops a little bit, I think, uh, the next night as far as uh, there was a little man crush going on there with Robson and you. Uh, and, and yes. <laughs> after the first round, I mean, uh, you know, he really, re he was showing really good, um, you know, uh, you know, really good, what do you call it, uh, sportsmanship. But, you know, he shook your hand or whatever he wanted or whatever. But, like, after you finished him, it looked like he, uh, you know, he, he was... He was loving you there, Billy. I was busting your balls about a big man crush going on. What the hell went on at the end there? Yeah, he's um he's he's a really nice he's a really good dude. Um, like I honestly think he's too nice to be fighting. Like he's a preacher and like he's he seems like a very loving dude. So like I have no problem with him. And like it was it didn't bother me that he hugged me after the first round. I just, I was confused. I was like, don't you want to hurt me at all? Like, <laughs> this is a fight. Like, I, it was weird. And I think when I, when he did that, it really clicked. Like, he just, he doesn't want to be in this. He's not in a fight right now. He's, this is a competition to him. And it's very respectful. Um, but it's, that's not what a fight is. A fight is, there is respect and love, but it's not like a jiu-jitsu grappling match to where um, there's, like they, there's a lot of honor and pride in it, and they, it's very much like a dance. Whereas a fight is very gritty and grimy, and I'm going to hurt you because if you don't want to hurt me, you're going to lose. Like if you're trying to be nice and um, not shove elbows in my face, you're not gonna win because you just don't have the right mentality when things, like when shit hits the fan, you need to want to hurt somebody. Well, and he was just he yeah, didn't want to. yeah, and you like that the end of that second round when he did that. Um, usually when that happens, it's it. Usually you guys are going, uh, you got you guys are banging in the pocket, going back and forth, and putting on like a a great competitive uh, fight. It seemed like he was doing that kind of like uh, more like holy shit, this kid's for real. You know what I mean? Great, great, great round, kid. That's more how I got out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it wasn't like it. And someone said that maybe he was trying to trip me up, like trying to throw me off my game by being nice. And honestly, that's not a terrible idea, but it's, it just wouldn't work against me. But I thought it was hilarious when somebody told me that. Yeah, they, we, 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 were, we bust chops on, uh, on uh, Messenger all the time, me between uh, all other guys and stuff. And we were just, we were just uh, talking about it. It was kind of funny. We were like, leave the kid alone, man. I know he's good looking and shit, but, you know, you get, leave the kid alone. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my man. Big, big win for Bellator. Your second win for Bellator. Uh, you know, was there any talks? Uh, what's going on? Like, what, what, what's the future with Billy? Uh, you know, what's what's next for you? So there's um, so Bellator is done for the year. They have a fight at Mohegan in February, and we've already messaged them about it. So it's just a matter of getting something uh, confirmed. There's a couple people that we were looking at. Uh, some people that were actually on the card. We were looking at them. Um, we watched them fight after my fight, and we we're like, I want that one. Um, but we just got to see what they say, what they offer, what they think. Um, but I'm, since I'm coming off a win against Hobson, who's undefeated, I have a little more leverage, so it gives me a little more pull. Exactly. Uh, can I ask you a question on who, who you might be interested in? Mm -hmm. Um, was it Cameron? So, was it Cameron's opponent? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> good so, hey, so what interesting? Well, I mean, he is welterweight. I mean, it isn't hard to uh, figure out. He likes the bang in there. Um, not as much. What do you What are you figuring about that matchup? And that looks like a great fucking matchup, kid. Um. So the the biggest thing that um I took away from that um. So he like he's a tough dude. Obviously, he's got a chin on him. Um, they both do, but it's his. They got tired. His cardio wasn't the best, and that's like he was it. That worked. That was fine. It wasn't as big of an issue. It was also because Cameron was tired. They were both tired, so. It didn't. It doesn't. If you're both tired, then it doesn't matter that you're tired. But if you're tired in the first round, uh, like Hobson got tired in the first round, and that's when it all started going downhill. Oh, his Bluetooth unconnect disconnected. That's what happened. I might get you back. There you are. Oh. That's, I can hear you. I uh, your camera's not on, but it's no big deal. We're we're almost done anyway. So yeah. So go ahead about uh, Hobson. Well, so that um, like Hobson was getting tired, and that's what really put him out of the fight. Because like if you're if you have energy to keep going, you can still throw up submissions. You can take you can shoot good takedowns. You th- you still keep your hands up. But when you get tired. And especially in the first round, that's now you have two rounds where you're going from 100% to 80 to 60. And if the other guy can still stay at 100, maybe 90, right around that range, then you're not going to win that fight unless you knock him out. Well, that's, that's just that's just hoping for that's picking hoping for straws. Well, yeah, he looked, uh, he definitely looked like he, they, well, they were both tied in that third round. And, uh, you know, Cameron was still trying to fire off on him. Uh, I think that's a great matchup for you, Billy. I think you'll put the pressure on him, and I think you could actually probably tire him out before that third round and take advantage of that, man. Um, sounds great to me, brother. So you think, uh, well, that's one of the names. So um, you're, you're thinking right that first card in in uh, 2021, that's when you'll be active for them again, right? Yes. I'm a, I will, if it's not him, because he was, um, he was uh, I saw a video on his um, Instagram Um he was in the hospital after that fight, so he was in a he was in a hospital bed. So I don't know how bad his injuries were, but you never know. It could he might not he might not want to make a two month turnaround. So that's hoping we'll see. Uh, but they I know they've got other names. Excellent. I don't, I don't know who, but they're gonna they've got somebody. Well, awesome, man. Well, if you don't get him, uh, we they know we know the competition is going to get uh, stiffer and stiffer. So great for you, man. I can't wait to uh, see what's next for you, brother. So before I let you go, Billy, uh, throw your shout outs out there. Anyone you want to thank, uh, social media, uh, and uh, and I'll let you go and uh, enjoy the snowstorm from uh, from your lovely warm home. <laughs> yeah, I um no, I just. Honestly, the biggest like I want to say thank you to my coaches and my teammates. Like they've, I wouldn't be in this position if it wasn't for them, and they've given me so much over the past year and the past four years that I've been training. And it's just I'm very grateful for them. And um, anybody who's out there looking for a good coach, who's looking for someone, like my coach doesn't just coach you, and um, that's it. It's a very personal relationship and he cares like tremendously. And that's what makes his coaching that much more effective. And anybody who's looking for a good coach or a good gym to come to, they, they should come down to my gym down in Groton at, um, 730 Monday through Friday. Um, it's the, it's called the rough house and you guys uh, follow the page on Instagram and Facebook. It's team Dexter Valley Tudo. Excellent, my man. Uh, well, Billy, I imagine your uh, social media is going to be growing now uh, leading up to that next fight because uh, you put on a show, brother. Uh, you have the looks, you have the talent, and now you have the win, the biggest win under your belt, brother. So congratulations and thank you so much for uh, coming on uh, You know, during a snowstorm, Billy. 
<laughs> yeah, man. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. All right, my man. Uh, as soon as you find something out, let's talk and let's get you back on the show yeah. and uh, and talk about this matchup. You'll be the first to hear. All right, my man. Glad to hear it, brother, and yeah. uh, appreciate it. And Merry Christmas, my man. You as well. Take care. Well, there you go. Billy Goff. With a huge win against Robson Gracie. So we do have Jonathan Piersma. Piersma coming on in a couple of minutes. I'm going to message him right now and let him know that I'm ready for him. It's kind of uh, weird because uh, you got to be watching this on um, YouTube to... Uh... Oh, let me go over here. Hold on. I know what I'm going to do right now. Um... Sorry, people. It's a work in progress. Give me a second, will you? Give me a second. Give me a second, Jonathan. I think Jonathan is uh, held up in a hotel room right now, and I do believe it's because of uh, the COVID. So he has to... Uh... Oh, there it is right there. Man, that doesn't look bad. That doesn't look bad. All right, Jonathan, I'm going to message you. Where are you, Jonathan? I'll tell you, I'm calling right now. I'm calling. I'm calling you. All right, let me, uh, I had a message, um, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, Peter Barrett. So, Jonathan, where are you, Jonathan? There you are. I'm going to just say, ready, bro? Ready? There we go. Jonathan, where are you? There you go, Jonathan. Jonathan's right there. I got to get Jonathan's stuff up. It's text. There we go. We're ready. All right, let me shut the display capture off. Uh, and then I got to set up his camera for a second. That's why I need a producer. Anyone run a producer show? I'll give you a, a, I'll give you a something. Jonathan, what's up, my man? How's it going? Good. Give me a second. I got to put your uh, your face up on here. Uh, connect you. So uh, there you are, man. Awesome, brother. Uh, before I start, man, thank you so much for uh, giving me this time, man. I know you're probably cutting some weight in that lonely hotel room of yours right now. <laughs> are you uh, are you COVID um, segregated from everyone else in that room right now? Uh, well, I actually got my teammate here with me, but I mean, I guess besides us. Is, is that what they do? Like, are you uh, put away from everyone? Did you have to take a test or was that already done? I yeah, we we had to get tested today. Oh, all right. So you got tested today, and um, yeah. w when you find out tomorrow the results, and then uh, we go from there. Or... Yeah, uh, they told me they would email me, but um, I just talked to Lars. I guess he's going to handle it. So I, I think everything's good. But excellent. Well, he's not panicking on my messenger right now, so yeah. uh, I would. <laughs> I think I mean, we're good, dude. But you dude, never know. It's already, it's already got me twice. This yeah, year, yeah, so. I know. You know, uh, last uh, trying to get helping you get fights, and then I mean, you had fights falling through before that. So, uh, dude, yeah. uh, we're so close again. When you were supposed to fight for CF CFFC, I think eighty nine last month. Yeah. Um, how long before the the fight was supposed to take place was that fight canceled for you? Uh, what about? The same as today, two days oh, before fuck, the fight. Fuck off, man. Sorry. Where? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, oh, my God. And I think I uh, – did I uh, – no, I think I interviewed you maybe a couple of days before that. Yeah, a couple of days before. All right. I don't want to be a jinx here, man. We're so close, brother. We're so yeah, close. No. Um, man, so the reason why the last fight was called off is because your uh, opponent uh, couldn't make the fight. I don't know if it was, uh, you know, he was sick. What, what was going on with that? Uh, well, he, he tested positive for Did COVID. Did he? So there you go, yeah. man. So, uh, well, he's coming. I mean, he, he's definitely yeah. passing the test tonight. So, excellent. Uh, so, so. so <laughs> it is 2020, man. Anything can happen at this point. So, brother, uh, second time around, man, how you feeling about it? And when the last fight was canceled, I know you were cutting weight and stuff. How'd it feel to, uh, for that to happen to you kind of again and, and, you know, not knowing the future? Um, well, yeah, it really sucked. Um, 
especially at the time because I didn't when it first got canceled, I didn't know it was going to get rescheduled so quickly. Um, so kind of that's when I kind of, when it first got canceled, was chalking it up to this year. It was just a wash type thing. Um, and originally right after he, that fight got canceled, uh, CFFC was talking about rescheduling the fight, but it would possibly be in Mississippi. Um, and that's a, that's a travel for me. So we didn't know if that was going to work, this and that. But then luckily... Um, I think it was like a day or two after Thanksgiving, they uh, reached out and said uh, Lancaster, PA for Friday. So it all worked out. Excellent, man. So you are still in training camp. You just had to, you know, uh, shed that turkey, that big dinner out, and uh, we're back to where yeah. we were. Yeah, yeah, I was still, because uh, they told us they wanted to reschedule. So right after it got canceled, you know, I took a day or two and then right back in the gym. And uh, I was actually kind of glad they didn't officially tell me they're going to reschedule it till the day after Thanksgiving. So I didn't have to feel bad about eating Thanksgiving dinner. Excellent, man. So, uh, so you got a little, uh, a little treat there, man. So now we're back, yeah, yeah. We're, we're back on the grind, brother. You're back to starving. Uh, yeah. how, you know, how's it, how's it the second time around? How are you feeling tonight? Uh, I feel, I feel really good actually. Um, uh, you know, we're, you know, less than 24 hours from weighing in. So just, you know, the hardest parts coming up, but I feel pretty good. I don't think it should be, uh, too bad. Excellent. Well, I know, uh, you know, another guy uh, you're close with that was supposed to be on the car with you, Jacob Bond there. Uh, his fight yeah. just recently fell through. He was going to be fighting Tim Dooling, which we think that's a fucking incredible matchup. That is just an entertaining fight. Uh, just ready to happen. So we're, we're hoping they reschedule that. We don't know what happened to Tim, but uh, we'll see what happens in uh, early 2021 because I, they got a bunch of cards coming up, man. But dude, making your pro debut, you're fighting the same dude, Tyler Bunt Bunting. Um, I don't know if you studied too much about your opponents at this level. I mean, uh, but you you had another month to kind of think about this fight, man. Has anything changed in your training uh, to get ready for this? Um, not not really. Um, we watched a couple fights. You know, we got a idea of what we think he's gonna do. Uh, we kind of made an idea of what you know some things that I gotta focus on. But you know, I don't. I really think just focusing more so on what I'm going to do than, you know, worried about him for me personally. Um, but, you know, we, we got an idea of what we think it's going to go like. But, yeah, I think the extra month helps, you know. Uh, it was nice, another extra month just to get ready. But, yeah, we feel good about it. Um, you know, just ready to weigh in and get going. Excellent, excellent. Um, do, uh, do you have another dude that uh, is fighting – after this fight of yours, are you going to uh, someone else's fight on the weekend, or did that fight fall through? Oh, no, that was that was actually supposed to happen um, for the last fight. I was supposed to fight on Thursday, and then uh, my team I was fighting on Saturday, but my fight got canceled, and then his whole card got canceled, so neither of us fought. Jesus, what's going on with him now? Did he get a rebooking, or is he looking for some uh, a scrap? No, he's uh, he's actually uh, he's going to be looking for a fight coming up in the uh, new year. Excellent, man. Well, CFFC is always looking. Brother, uh, you get to use all your tools now. Uh, how are you feeling about getting to drop elbows? I, I know you uh, like to take these take people down and put punishment there, but you were limited as an amateur. Uh, how are you feeling about uh, having that full arsenal at your disposal? Oh, I can't wait. Um, that's one of the things that I've always you know, been waiting for is you know, be able to utilize the elbows on the ground. Um, you know, Obviously, grappling is my... What I feel is my strength, and I want to get the fight to the ground. Um, obviously, in where I fought amateur, they weren't allowed, so I never got to do it. I was kind of jealous watching some of his tapes. Um, the state he fought, and I think it was Virginia, they allowed elbows. Oh, is that right? Um, so he got to throw a few, but um, yeah, I, I'm excited. You know, you know, I've been working them a little bit, and uh, can't wait. I think uh, I'll really be able to fit them into my game plan nicely. Excellent. Well, he's a he's a game opponent. Uh, early in his career, uh, undefeated six and zero. Early in his career, he was uh, getting a lot of finishes by uh, TKOs and uh, uh, submissions. Uh, I think his last two or three fights um, went to decisions, and I believe that's because he fought uh, better talent. You know, uh, more experienced fighters, so they're going to take him deeper there. Uh, so. You know, looking at his record, I mean, he was fighting two and old guys, one and old guys. You know, he's fighting uh, probably. Uh, I wouldn't say his most experienced guy in you, but his most dangerous guy uh, to date, man. What What do you think? What is he? What do we expect from you, brother, in this fight? 
as far as, you know, not game plan, but um, what's this kid going to be surprised about when he sees you? Uh, I think I think he's going to be surprised at every aspect. Um, you know, it's been over like 14 months now since I've fought. Um, I feel like I've just gotten, you know, worlds better in that time period. Um, you know, I think it's going to be tough for him to judge, you know, based off my fight feeling this out there. Um, that's not really who I am anymore, I don't feel like. Um, so, yeah, I think he's just going to be um, surprised with every aspect that, you know, that he's probably not thinking that I'm going to have. But, you know, in that last year or so, I've really up to a lot of different levels in my game. Um, you're going to be on Fight Pass, brother. A lot of eyes on you in, uh, in your pro debut here. Any any nerves going in, knowing that's going to be uh, there? Or do you uh, thrive on that, knowing that, uh, you know, this is going to propel you with your getting your hand raised in 2021? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't say so anymore. Nerves, I mean, there's always going to be the normal nerves of, you know, going out there to fight somebody. But um, it's probably going to be... It's going to be maybe a little weird with no crowd. Um, I don't know what to expect of that yet. I don't know if it's going to be um, harder or easier. I don't know. It'll be an interesting experience, you know. It's pretty much just going to be us in the cage with some camera guys watching. So it'll be like kind of fighting in the gym. But, um, yeah, that'll be interesting. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Excellent, man. Um, Yeah, we did have uh, fans up until uh, last week sometime. Lars and I, we were going to make the trip. We were going to come up and uh, see you and uh, Jacob go at it. And then uh, we bought a table. <laughs> and then an hour, an hour and a half later, they took it away from us. We were like, fuck, man. We were ready to That's drive no. down there. So, uh, yeah, and you got a big fan base. You got a lot of, uh, you know, you got a big following, dude. Did you have a bunch of people coming down with you or, um, you know, just a handful? Uh, yeah, there was going to be a decent. I think I was going to have like four or five tables, so not crazy but i you know i had like 15 or 20 people i think that were going to come down um yeah you know so that sucked they all they all had their hotels and tables bought and everything and then you know a week out it all got pulled so that kind of sucked but you know they'll be at home watching so yeah exactly they'll be more comfortable at home they'll be you know you you'll be they'll be it'll be like an ice igloo all igloos all around that place come uh Friday night, man. So yeah, it's, it's back-to-back cards, man. That's going to be a busy, busy, uh, busy spot over there. Are you going to the? Oh no, you're going to be weighing in. But our, uh, I'm, a, I'm, I imagine you'll watch the fights on uh, Thursday night. Um, I don't, I don't think we're going to be allowed to go down and watch them. They'll be on fight. They'll be on fight pass. Oh though. yeah, yeah. I watched my fight pass. <laughs> I thought you might go down and watch. Them. Oh no, no, no. You can't go down there. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah. We'll probably watch them on fight pass. You know, we'll just be uh, in the room eating, rehydrating. You know, probably throw the fights on and you know see what see how it goes. Excellent, my man. Well, dude. Um, you know, all the power to you. All the you know positive energy going your way, brother. For like the third or fourth time. Yeah. Um, you know, man. Congratulations making that pro debut, bro. Um, we can't wait to we see it. Thank God it's on Fight Pass. You know what I mean. That we can all uh, yeah. you know look at it and and uh, you know talk about it after, man. Uh, last thing, brother. Shout out to all that other stuff. Anyone you want to say thank to, thank you to, and uh, social media, and then I'll let you get back to uh, cutting weight and uh, and relaxing in there. Um, just you know, shout out to my you know friends, family. Um, everyone who supports me, uh, my coaches for coming down, uh, my teammates, um, especially my teammate that came down with me this morning to help me cut weight and ride with me. Um, yeah, just, you know, everyone that supported me, and uh, it's going to be ruined for me Friday night. Uh, one last thing. Uh, how long does it take you to get there? How long of a drive is that from you? Uh, it ended up being about five hours. Oh, all right. So it's so, not too bad, I yeah. guess. Well, not too bad, yeah. Um, yeah, at least you didn't have to. When'd you get there? Did you eat? When did you uh, head up there and start driving up? Or driving well, up? I, had to, I had to leave at five this morning because I had to get my COVID test done by eleven. Excellent. So it was so, uh, early morning. So you just made it. Awesome, man. So well, you didn't. At least you don't have to trek there in the snow. And you know, it's kind of um, well, the snow would have been all done. I was going to say people wouldn't have had to travel in the snow or nothing, but they would already been yeah. there or it would have been after it. Well, Jonathan, man, thank you so much for uh, calling in, man. I know it's uh, crunch time. I know you're cutting weight. And uh, the last thing you want to do is talk to uh, aggravating Steve in the room yeah. podcast. But, man, 
<laughs> it is. It, I, it pleasures all mine, man. Uh, and I look forward to talking to you. Uh, you know, a week or two after this fight and getting your take on your uh, your pro debut and experience. Sure. All right, my man. I'm gonna let you go, but uh, thanks again, man. And uh, you know, knock him, knock him dead on Friday night, dude. Uh, ground and pound this kid uh, to your first victory. That was good. Can't wait. Thanks for having me. All right, later. Have a good All night. Right, thanks. All right. Awesome. Well, there's Jonathan Pizma. I'm stuttering all over the place, by the way. Anyway, I'm trying to produce a show and uh, and play there. Um, this stuff at the same time. It's kind of hard here. Uh, Peter Barrett is going to be coming on in like three minutes. Uh, where is he? Let me get him. Uh, let me get his. Uh... Uh, all right. So he's set right there. Let me get him right there. Where are you, Pete? There you go, Pete. So <clears throat> before we talk to Peter and uh, I uh, talk a little bit about Peter before he comes on, I just want to give a shout out to... Um, BKFC, Bare Knuckle Boxing, Bare Knuckle, oh my God, I'm so sorry I said that. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Uh, big card they had on Friday night. Uh, what a weekend for fights. Thursday night was Bellator 254. Friday night was uh, BKFC 15. And Saturday was um, UFC 256. I, I was a happy in the, as a pig and shit. So uh, as far as BKFC 15, what a great card. Um, they lost their main event. Two weeks out from the fights, but uh, they they filled it with uh, Bobo O'Bannon against Sam Shoemaker. The fight didn't last very long, but it was entertaining because it is bare knuckle fighting. So, uh, you know, people get knocked out quick there. There was, uh, you know, a load of load of fights that ended that are going to make matchups for their next card. There was a lot of heavyweights, a lot of fighters making making waves in this card. So um kudos to BKFC and uh the 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 owners there, David Feldman and matchmaker Nate Shook for uh coming up with another great card. I think their next card is in January. I'm not sure if it's a toe the line card or a BKFC card, but there it is in January. And then um I know definitely there is a BKFC card with Paige Van Zant. Making her debut Super Bowl weekend, the Friday of Super Bowl weekend. So uh, BKFC doing big things. I will be interviewing, I do believe, Felony Charles Bennett tomorrow about his fight, which I do believe um, was way closer than uh, the commentators and the ref and the judges scored it. Um, so we'll be talking to Charles Bennett on Friday. So I'm going to message Peter. See if he's ready, and uh, we'll get Peter on, and we'll talk about his scrap against um, the dream, Chase Hooper. So Slippery Peter Barrett coming off uh, a great fight on Saturday night against Chase Hooper. Peter dominating two rounds with his stand-up. And, uh, you know, that's MMA. He got caught in a third round in um, in a knee bar. And uh, that's how shit happens, man. Shit just happens, man. It's MMA. It's anyone's fight, anytime. So, um, you know, we're going to talk to Peter about how he felt the second time around. Uh, his second appearance for the UFC fighting uh, Chase Hooper. And, man, like I said, Peter looked great, great in there. He just got caught. In a submission, it happens. So, that's my story. So, um, I am going to play um, another. Uh, let me get Pete's stuff up here. Um, Jonathan shared it. So, I am going to get Pete's stuff up here. And I'm going to share another, um, uh, another commercial. Because this is one of our other sponsors here. Alpha Bullocks. And uh, the best supplements on the market right here. So check them out while we uh, wait for Pete. Alpha Bullocks is the new standard in quality supplements, providing you the highest quality performance. Alpha Bullocks seeks to succeed in all aspects of life. Learn, grow, challenge yourself every day. Follow our social media for sales, training videos, lifestyle tips, and product drops. 
All right, Pete is ready. I think Pete's ready. All right, here we go, Pete. Here we go. Let me get out of there. Let me get out of there. Let me get out of there. People are sending me pictures on my messenger and shit. It's kind of funny. Funny hoo ha. All right, Pete. Here we are, Pete. Here we are, Pete. So, repeat, coming up. That's so loud. Slippery Pete! What up, Steve? What's going on? Give me a second. Let me get your face on the screen here. Um, you are live now, but they just don't see you, right? Let me get you there. There's Pete. Wait, let me make your head smaller. Holy shit, your head's huge in there. What's going on? There it is. <laughs> What's going on, Slippery Man? Nothing. I just had to, I had to get my ass over to Stop and Shop before everything shuts down and I get snowed in for a couple days. So how was that? Uh, how was that scene there? It was like Christmas at Walmart, right? Well, so I just I wanted to make sure I was uh, able to get inside when we were done. So I'm still in the parking lot. I haven't gone in yet. Oh wait, wait, you haven't gone in yet? Yeah. Oh, all right, man. So where where are we just priming you up and getting you uh, getting you ready and uh, psyched up to get in? To get <laughs> yeah. Hopefully there's hopefully there's enough stuff left. So, Pete, uh, it must be snowing pretty heavy over there right now, right? It, it's getting there. Yeah, it's it, getting there. it sucks right now. Uh, I'll be getting out of here in about 25 minutes. But, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a really, uh, really white, white morning, man. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. My my <laughs> snowblower is stuck behind a wrestling mat, so hopefully I can weasel that out in the morning. But, well, dude, you were just in Vegas, right? What was it, like fucking 70 degrees? What was the, the, the temperature there? Oh, Vegas was awesome. I, I was in shorts and a T-shirt every day. So you go you go from there and you come to a northeastern nothing nothing like you're not used to anyway. You know? Oh, why would I expect that? <laughs> so my man, uh, dude, I gotta congratulate you on that fight. I mean, you know, you're probably not really happy about losing, but that fight was in fucking incredible, brother. As far as the two rounds, just stalking that kid down and uh, kind of, um, you know, just beating him up on the feet, man. How'd you feel about the fight? And how'd you feel in there the second time, uh, in, you know, fight for the UFC? Uh, so second time around, I definitely felt a lot more comfortable. Um, and I, I think that reflected well in my performance. And then, uh, I mean, the first two rounds, I mean, everything went great in that fight until it, until it went wrong. You know what I mean? Like DC said it best. That's, that's a great way to pitch a no hitter. And then, and then blow it, um, which is kind of like cold. But in reality, like that's pretty much what had happened. You know, our game plan was to treat him like a hot stove, only hit him when we needed to, stay stay far enough away but close enough to do damage. Um, so you know, it was it was great until it wasn't. So I mean, I had a blast, as you could tell. I think uh, in the second round, I was I was headbutting his punches because you know I figured out he might as well hit the hardest place if he's going to land them, but um, it was all the emotions, you know what I mean? I went from from crushing the first and the second round to watching the third round slip away from me, so I mean, it, it, was, a, it was a roller coaster ride for sure. And dude, I mean, you know, the first two rounds, uh, you know, I heard him talking about the fight and a lot, you know, the, the internet was blowing up about how he kind of grasped defeat in that last round, like everyone had you win in that fight decisively, man. And he came on, he was talking about, uh, you know, comparing the striking here. A lot of his strikes, I do believe a lot, uh, he, he bunched a lot of them up when he had you on the ground there. Uh, and when he was hitting you on the forehead, I would imagine, you know, he got a bunch of, uh, you know, strikes that that really didn't do much damage, but they were scoring points, which didn't really affect the fight much at the end, bro. But, how do you see as far as your striking compared to him? Because he was saying that, you know, he was standing in there and he was he was hitting you as much as you were hitting him. I mean, when I got back to the room, Crew Mark and Andy sat me down and made me rewatch the fight because of how disappointed I was. And it's not that I thought I didn't perform well. It's the fact that I got so close and I watched it slip away. So, like in that same breath of air, like, I, I think I dominated that whole fight first, second, and third round, right up until the point where he hit the m and roll and caught my leg and we went deep, and then he switched it to the other side and whatever. We can go through that whole situation in that sequence if you want, but um, I was whooping his ass, you know what I mean? He was taking a beating, he couldn't, you know, he was switching his stance up, you 
you know, there, there are some adjustments that I could have made that I didn't, but at the same time, like I was fucking him up and he did get a lot of, he did get a lot of those punches when I was holding onto his wrist to make sure that he didn't get my leg. Um, the leg kicks that he did get were the downward kicks on top of my thigh, which were fucking trash to begin with. Like, um, they weren't really doing much damage and it was kind of just like, I didn't even really care for them because they, they weren't affecting my approach to the situation. Yeah. But, um, and then even his hands, like on that same note, like it became, it became pretty apparent after the first round that like I could slip his punches if I wanted to. And I didn't have to because I didn't have to, if I didn't want to, because they weren't doing any damage. So once I had made the, the distinction that like he was throwing pillows that, it didn't matter if I was going to get hit, but it took that whole urgency of defense right out of my, out of my mind, which is, is, is a mistake on my own behalf. But at the same time, like I knew that they weren't a threat. So I was kind of like, fuck it. I don't really need to pay attention too much to striking as long as I know that I'm hitting him and he's not close enough to, to like wet blanket me. So, um, like he, I think he was trying to convince himself. You know what I mean? Like, if, if you're, like, halfway sold on a lie, you're going to be the, 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 the loudest one trying to sell everyone else about it because you're trying to convince yourself of the same fucking thing. So I, someone pointed that out to me today. I went over, I checked out that post, and I would say that uh, he's in denial. Um, but, you know, you're a fan. A lot of the other fans said the same thing. He got his ass whipped for three, for two and a half rounds. And he was finally able to get that Imanari roll to a leg lock, which, whatever, we knew that's how he was going to, that, we knew that was, that was the only way he was going to beat me, and kudos to him for getting it. But um, to, to sit here and think that he can compare the striking of his and mine is, is laughable. Exactly. And, you know, everyone thought the same thing. Not, you know, not to take anything away from his win. I mean, he's a good kid. I mean, uh, young kid and stuff. But, yeah, like you said, you were whooping his ass on, uh, you know, on the feet there, man. Uh, I lost your camera there for a second. Yeah, but, no, right, sorry. No, 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 no I'm worries. Back, I'm back. Uh, but Pete, I mean, you were keeping you were keeping that distance there, and you were lighting them up on the feet, and you were staying out of that, you know, that grappling range there. Uh, that third round, you know, there was a couple of times in there that you really closed the distance, and you almost had that clinch, like you almost did. And there was a there was one time in particular that you were so close, like you were so close to getting him. And really being able to inflict some damage, did that frustrate you a little bit at, at time here and there that you weren't able to put your hands on him as much as you really wanted to in the in that clinch that put that damage? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we I would I would like to fight someone who's most dangerous at a close range is their fists and their elbows, not their leg lock attack, you know. But um, we fought him with a specific game plan. And that was to not let him, you know, get a hold of me by any means possible. I mean, we've seen him, you know, spider monkey to someone's back. We've seen him full guard. We've seen him in a Minari roll. I mean, we've seen all of his offensive attacks to get to people's backs, to get to people's hips. So we were we were aware of all of it. So that, that did definitely impact the way that we attacked the fight. You know, like we wanted to be close enough to do damage, but far enough away to be, to be one step away from him, him getting my hips. So it, it put me in a weird place where, you know, would I have loved to have lit up his body? Yeah, but could that have given him an opportunity to wet blanket me and jump on my back? Absolutely. So it was a cost. It was a, what, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a, a cost benefit analysis. Like at what point is hitting him in the belly worth him being able to like possibly jump my back and then get me to the ground? You know, like we knew his only approach to win that fight was to get me to the ground and, you know, right off the rip, what would he do? He tried to, to shoot a takedown. Yeah. What did I do? I sprawled hard and stuffed his face into the mat. He knew right from the rip that, like, oh, I can't half-ass any wrestling takedowns. He's going to be stuffing my face the whole time. So, like, you know, like, we had to uh, we had to, to adjust the way we were attacking. Well, it was a great game plan, Pete. You had the kid backing up the whole time, and like you said, when he when he went in for them takes downs, you had great sprawls, and uh, you know you kept the kid from latching onto you until that third round, and uh, you know that's what the freaking kid does. He's a little octopus, uh, and he was it was desperation. I mean, he had to. I mean, that's all he had left. 
I mean, it was desperation and the kid came up on top. That shit happens. That's MMA. Pete, man, you performed great in there, bro. Uh, where do we go from here? And uh, I mean, uh, yeah, you, you had to come out of the fight uh, pretty damn healthy. I mean, uh, how, how's the knee feel? I mean, he didn't uh, he didn't really extend it enough to really do any damage. But uh, how you feeling? How's the body feeling from a, a fight like that? Um, so he actually, he got, he, my right knee popped pretty hard at the end of the first round. And then, uh, that's the same knee he was on in the third, but, uh, I just got some MRI schedules. So I'll have a, a clear idea of, of the recovery from that on Friday. All right, man. So, uh, all right. So we wait on the doctor's call, but you got some time to, uh, hang out. You get to enjoy the holidays, brother. You got a new house. Uh, you got, yeah, you got a, a bunch of stuff to enjoy. You had a great fight, brother. So uh, you have a lot of fans behind you, man. So how are you going to enjoy Christmas? I mean, it's probably going to be a white one now, even though you're not going to be you're not going to be able to be around a pool in Vegas or anything. But uh, you know, New England's New England, and I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah, no, I mean, hopefully we'll be able to spend it with family. It depends on season, you know. We, it, it really depends on how crazy this COVID gets. But uh, if we can get the whole family together, you can bet your ass we're going to do that. But otherwise. You know, it might be a quiet. It might be a quiet Christmas this year, so we'll see. Excellent, Pete. One last thing. Uh, you had your brother go with you. Uh, make this trip with you. Uh, I'm gonna just play a little. Uh, some of the pre-fight uh, warm-up stuff with him and stuff. But how was it to have him? I know the last time I think you had Chip with you. Uh, this time you had your brother uh, tagging along and uh, helping you out with some of that grappling work. Uh, how did it feel to have him uh, in your corner? Oh, it was great. You know, uh, one thing led to another. One of Joe's kids popped for COVID, so he couldn't come out. And uh, some names came up. I said, let me call Max. I called him. He said, let me talk to my boss. He called me back. He said, I'll be on a plane as soon as possible. So, you know, just having that kind of support from your brother and only having to make one phone call and him being able to drop everything because he understands how important that is, just like, is, is a pretty incredible situation to be in. Excellent, man. Uh you know, it must have been pretty, uh, pretty uh, exciting for him too uh, uh, to be put in that spot and just to experience that all. You know what I mean? So, how do you feel about that experience? Oh, without a doubt, I think it was uh, it was a great experience for him too. I mean, there was such a period of our life where we were both working towards this dream. Uh, you know, and he made the decision to head into a professional life and start a family, but. That gave him the first-hand experience to see everything that he had been working for. So it was, I think it was a great opportunity, you know what I mean? And, and uh, he's definitely an option that I can keep in mind moving forward for a third corner. Excellent. Well, uh, Pete, it was a great weekend for, uh, you know, New England and New England fighters, man. Uh, as far as, you know, from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we had uh, New England fighters on all different cards, you know, Bellator, Bare Knuckle Fighting, and uh, the big one, UFC, you there, man. Uh, you know, all the fighters performed, man. They all did well. Uh, you know, not everyone came away with a win, but everyone made New England proud uh, for what they're doing out there and, uh, you know, make putting us on the map. So, Pete, man, again, congratulations on a great fight. Uh, you had that fight, brother, man. We were, I mean, uh, you know, I, we were like, Pete, Pete was on fire, man. <laughs> Pete, was, Pete, Pete was on fire, brother. It was, it was good to watch you in there and having fun and just your movement and, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, calculated violence, man. It was just that f that fucking kid with that roll at the end, man. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes you're winning, you learn. All right, my man. Hey, Pete, man, glad to uh, see you smiling and uh, back in the snow with all of us here suffering. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> all right, my man. Uh, thanks so much for calling in, brother. And, uh, you know, uh, let's talk again. Come on the podcast anytime. I'll have you on. Uh, be my co-host sometime. I'll have people call in and we'll bust their balls. I'm down. Just let me know. Let's <laughs> let's get it together. All right, my man, Pete. Thanks a lot. Uh, any uh, shout outs? Anything you want to say before I let you go? And actually, uh, no, I don't. I thought I have it, but I don't have it. I thought I had a picture of your shirt with all your all the sponsors, but I don't. Oh, I no, I don't. Fuck, I should. Suck. I send it to you. I know I Somewhere. suck. I know it, it'll get here. The post office sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, just uh, jump at. Just follow me on my on my. Uh, on my Instagram. That's where I am most active, and that's where I put out most of my content. That's slippery underscore Pete 145. Excellent, my man. I got it up here during the interview so everyone can see it. So, Pete, thank you so much, man. Have a fabulous Christmas. Uh, you know, um, you know, great health to your family and everyone who has enormous backing for your uh, for your 
you know, your, Thank you. you know, your career here and everyone else in New England, man. Thanks a lot again, Pete, and you have a great night, and thank you for coming on again. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Steve. Take care, bro. Nice. Slippery Pete. Thanks, man. Take care. Have a good one. Later. Awesome. Great dude, man. Um, You know, great dude. Didn't come away with the win Saturday night, but uh, he beat that kid up for two and a half rounds until desperation sat, set in and that kid uh, rolled in and uh, got that leg of Pete's. And like Pete said, he uh, did hear a pop in his knee in the first round. Uh, I'm not sure where that could have happened. could have happened anywhere. I mean, that kid was, uh, you know, kicking at Pete's knee and uh, Pete was kicking that kid pretty good. Pete almost finished him with leg kicks. Uh, taking out that, taking out, I got a chase. I'm sorry, chase. Taking out Chase's leg. So uh, with that said, um, yeah, Piers man is a beast. Uh, who else is talking to Kim? We are so excited to watch you, Jonathan. Excellent. So with that said, um, last thing, do I want to do anything else? Oh, uh, big shout out to uh, Full Contact Management, which Jonathan Piersma is a part of. So is Jacob Bond. Um, and so many other fighters as Cam Arnold and uh, Pat Casey and Ross Hilton, Shane Manley. Who else is over there? Ken Murphy. Uh, full contact management, getting it done. Uh, like we said, Jacob Bond was supposed to fight on the CFFC 91 card, but his opponent, Tim Dooling, could not make the dance. So we're hoping to get Jacob Bond on a CFFC card early 2021. So with that said, everybody, thank you for coming on. Next Wednesday will be our Christmas podcast. Uh, I'm not sure. I might have Lars and Travis on, and we will have probably open phone lines that you people can call in and all that good stuff. So with that said, thank you so much. Everyone, have a great week.